Hey everybody, Matt here for Imagine Then Meg. Thanks for stopping by. Well, I'm in front of the scroll saw today and I'm going to be making some test cuts on a piece of pine that's about three quarters of an inch thick and also a piece of particle board that's about five eighths of an inch thick. I'm going to be using four different blades, two of which I've used before, so I have some a decent amount of experience with. And I'm also going to try out a couple of other blades that I haven't done really much with. So it'll be interesting to see how they how they compare with one another. So this first blade on the left is a pin end blade. It's fairly wide, but it does have a fair number of teeth per inch. I'm not sure of the exact value, but you can see how fine of a blade it is. Next to that is a spiral blade. This one has 36 teeth per inch and cuts a 41 thousandths of an inch wide kerf. These two blades I've done a fair amount with recently. These next two blades I really haven't done much with at all. This first one is a skip tooth blade where every other tooth is missing, but all the teeth are pointed in the same direction. And this blade next to it, the last one, is also a skip tooth blade However, the teeth at, toward the bottom of the blade are pointed in the other direction, the reverse direction, or they're pointed upward. So this is referred to as a skip tooth reverse blade. So the plan here is to make the same four straight cuts using these four blades on the two pieces of wood, and then at the end, compare the quality of cuts. So we're going to start with the wide pin and blade and we'll start cutting on the piece of pine.
Okay, so we're going to switch over to the spiral blade now. Ready to cut. Ready to switch over just to the plain skip tooth blade. Okay. Ready to cut. Okay, ready to switch to the skip tooth reverse blade. Okay, so I ran into an interesting problem here in trying to put this reverse tooth blade into the lower blade clamp and it looks like the thickness of the blade is such that it doesn't easily want to go inside the blade clamp so i might have to force the clamp open a little bit more in order to get the blade in there. So let's try and figure something out here. So what I'm going to try and do here is just use some 220 grit sandpaper on the end of this blade and see if I can remove enough material or maybe just clean off the end of the blade, I'm not really sure what the problem is. It is a little bent, but still it seems like it's too thick to go in my lower blade clamp. So, like I said earlier, I haven't tried this blade before. 
So this is the first time I've run into this problem. Okay, I think it's getting closer. And turn the camera off and continue sanding. So after a little bit more sanding, I was able to get the blade into the lower blade clamp with the help of this needle nose pliers. It does raise an interesting question though that I'm going to have to follow up on and that is what's the maximum blade thickness that this lower blade clamp is able to accept. But for right now it looks like it's in there pretty well. So I'm ready to give this a try. All right, I think we're ready to cut. All right, so here's my two test pieces, three quarters of an inch thick pine, five eighths of an inch thick particle board. If we start with the particle board, these first two cuts were made with the pin end blade with all the teeth pointing in the same direction, all going down. It was fairly easy for me to stay on the line and it made a decent cut. Here's the spiral blade. You can see that the kerf is quite a bit wider. That's to be expected since a spiral blade is a twisted blade. Here's the first skip tooth blade with all the teeth pointed down. Makes a pretty straight line. And here's the skip tooth reverse. And you can see that the, well, maybe it's hard for you to see, but the kerf cut by the skip tooth skip tooth reverse blade is a little wider since that blade is thicker than this skip tooth blade. Now if I turn the particle board over and try and look for tear out, so there is some but it's you know it's not horrible. So you see some on the pin end blade cut, some on the spiral end blade the uh, spiral blade and maybe a little bit with the plain skip tooth blade but then when you switch, look over to the skip tooth reverse blade I really just don't see any tear out at all which is what I would expect. If I switch over to the pine board which is the first board that I made my test cuts on the pin end blade, I just, it took a while before I could get on the line, which was kind of interesting. I tried a few times and each time it's like I didn't have the blade rotated enough to compensate for the blade drift. Here's the spiral blade cut, much wider kerf as to be expected. Here's the first normal skip tooth blade, fairly straight line, cut pretty nice. And here's the skip tooth reverse blade. It's a thicker blade, so it's cutting a wider kerf. Now if I turn the board over, this is really where the story is told. 
I hope you can see on the camera that there's a fair amount of tear out with the pin and blade. There's enough tear out to the point where I can feel it with my thumb there. Same thing with the spiral blade. There's a fair amount of tear out. Not sure if you can really see that on the camera. And even the skip tooth blade, there's a fair amount of tear out when cutting pine. Of course, I'm going across the grain. Now here is the skip tooth reverse blade cutting across the grain, the same, obviously the same piece of pine. And there's very little, I don't even really see any tear out. So it looks like the uh, skip tooth reverse blade did a much nicer job on this piece of pine than the other three blades. Now you may have seen when I was cutting both of these using the reverse skip tooth reverse blade that the the wood tended to jump a little bit more, which only makes sense because those last few teeth at the end of the blade point upward and they're going to try and pull the blade up off of the table on every upstroke. So, but all in all, not too bad. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. I know I learned a few things while making it. For me, what I learned is that when cutting softwoods like pine, using a skip tooth reverse blade, I'm more likely to make a higher quality cut because the skip tooth reverse blade doesn't create as much tear out on the back side of the cut. And I think I proved that to myself and hopefully to you guys while making my test cuts on this piece of pine. The back side of the test cuts for the pin end blade, the spiral blade, and even the normal skip tooth blade, all three of these blades produced a certain amount of tear out. But the skip tooth reverse blade, same piece of pine of course, didn't produce any tear out. So for me, going forward, what I want to do is find a skip tooth reverse blade that's a little bit thinner here so it'll fit easier into my lower blade clamp.